Alrighty, you guys back out here on our 68 Charger. Um, in all honesty, never really left. Um, pretty much living out here this week. That's why you guys are seeing so many videos um, come up this week. So let's jump straight into it. You guys know exactly where we're at. So <clears throat> we do still have a couple different repairs to do here on this lower cowl section. The biggest of which is what we're gonna start with today. This is that big ear, which on the other side, if you look here, it's basically where the upper cowl matches straight over the top of this, as well as the fender also um, has to line up with this as well. So pretty critical piece. We've got to make sure that we have it in the right location. Thankfully, we are able to use um, this off of that front clip donor that we got. So I started opening this up. I am going to do a couple little repairs just underneath here to make sure this is all solid and in good shape. May have to cut this back just a little bit so that way we get to some good metal and uh, make sure it's nice and uh, clean all the way around. Just like the other side, we're gonna have to rebuild this piece here. You can see this hole on this side. We've got another hole right there. <clears throat> and then a couple little spots. We'll open this uh, this bottom of the window channel up a little bit. Um, but a couple little, little rust holes, we can uh, open those up, fill those in and clean them up real nice. Um, also have some of the old spot weld um, holes here that we're gonna go ahead and fill in and make sure this is all nice and clean and even. On this top section, you can kind of see where this is a little bit uneven or where this metal is sticking up a little bit higher. So we're going to hammer dolly across this entire thing, make sure it's perfectly level, fit on our upper cowl and uh, make sure it all lines up before we finally get to burn that in and uh, focus more on our front clip. So let's jump straight into this here. I um, already got myself into a little bit of trouble with some of the cuts that I'd made a couple weeks ago. So you can see here. Got a little carried away with the grinding wheel. Open this up probably a little bit too far. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna sand this all down. <clears throat> We're gonna clean this up, weld this up and smooth it flush so that way it's just like it was originally. So something to pay attention to here is that you're essentially gonna have three layers of metal stacked on top of each other, right? So you're gonna start here, door pillar, biggest chunk of metal here. That's kind of what we're left with on this. Then you can see the lower cowl lays over the top of that. That's why you have this little piece of metal on top of there. And then of course you have the upper cowl, which sits over the whole thing. So essentially you've got the bottom uh, uh, spot welded to the middle, the top spot welded to the middle, and that's how you kind of get that sandwich. Also how you probably get some moisture in here and uh, allow for this to, to really rust away um, from the inside out. So, um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up. <clears throat> Gonna open these holes up a little bit more too. Put a couple little patch pieces in here. Also with this side here. Um, and again, you can kind of see there, got a little carried away again with that uh, with that grinding wheel. So we're gonna fix all this, make it right, and uh, make it like new. So let's go ahead and get started.
Alrighty guys, we're about to weld this piece on here, um, this ear on this uh, passenger side lower cowl section. So real quick though, I did want to show you kind of what I ended up with on the clip. So you can see here, I mean, I cut way bigger than what I needed to just to make sure that I didn't screw it up because I've done that before plenty of times. So always cut a bigger section out, then cut it in just a little bit by a little bit until you finally get the piece that you want. So, I mean, you can see what's left basically out of what I cut out of here. So yeah, it's about like that. So you can see here, it's uh, much, much smaller than it was. Um, but yeah, so when I cut it off there, it had all that inner structure. And basically when I took it out, I had all of this um, basically still connected. So I did cut all of that out of this piece, clean it up pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some uh, weld through primer and epoxy on the bottom side of this guy and uh, before we weld it on here. Um, but you can see here, follows the contour really nice and uh, that's pretty roughly where it's where it's gonna be at but you can see here I mean it was really key to match up these transition lines on the bottom side here up here did get a little carried away with a grinding wheel like a dumbass and definitely have to fix that not a big deal um, but the rest of this really should weld in very very nicely um, and uh, I'm gonna try to make it so you can't tell that it ever happened on the bottom side of here, I did have to cut back this support piece on the bottom because I left it all in place on my car here. It's kind of hard to see, but basically I'm going to run a weld all the way across the bottom side of this. So that way it's pretty much exactly like it was, if not a little bit better um, than what the factory was because they just had spot welds and I'm going to weld it solid on the bottom side of that. So, um, but yeah, making progress. Excited. So let's go ahead and get this piece welded in here. and. Uh, We'll uh, definitely take our time with this, make sure everything's lined up perfectly all the way around here and uh, keep moving. Alrighty guys, as we just saw, got this piece finished up. So it turned out really, really nice. Did want to show you this real quick. So you can see here, I mean, the seam is pretty much uh, indistinguishable from the rest of this. So um, just a little bit more cleanup to do, but uh, I'm excited to really start cleaning up and start doing the rest of this. So I'm gonna throw on the wire wheel and I'm gonna strip this guy completely down. We still have all of these uh, spot weld holes, as you can see here, that we're gonna have to go back through and uh, just clean up. We're gonna fill these, all of these, so that way it's all brand new, fresh, underneath our uh, new upper cowl. Um, on this side, I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna have to just really quickly hammer dolly this and just straighten it all out from pulling off that uh, the old upper cowl ended up bending this up just a little bit, but, um, but I'm excited. Uh, can finally start putting some good, uh, some good new AMD sheet metal back onto the car. So, uh, so let's go ahead and get cranking. Let's start stripping this down and uh, get it ready for epoxy.
Alrighty guys, quick tip for you. As I was going through here and welding all of these old spot weld holes um, that we're gonna have to basically do again, uh, I was on the back side here and you can see there's definitely still some holes right here. If you get a little bit ahead of yourself and you start filling these in, you can see, I mean, I was left with a lot of holes and it's pretty easy. I mean, you can see it's a little bit raised. Um, so that's kind of an indicator here, but don't just go through and start filling all of these without making absolute sure you're not filling in some of these holes here for the, uh, the trim. Okay, see another one right there. <coughs> so, but, uh, but all the rest of this looks really good. Fit up, the fit check looks spot on to be honest. We'll have to do just a little bit of trimming here on this, uh, on this corner. So you can see here my ear lines up really nice down here. This is all gonna look really good here. We will just trim a, the, the corner of this guy right here, this, uh, this patch of uh, lead that's right there. Um, but the rest of this lines up good. You can see hole lined up really nice there. <clears throat> Lip all the way across here filled in really nice. And you can see we're dead on in this other ear right here. So I did trim back this uh, lead seam a little bit further on this side uh, before I got started. Um, but yeah, so it's the importance of making sure you fit check every panel on this car or any car that you're working on, but just to make sure it all fits right before you make it permanent and you start welding. So we're gonna keep filling those holes in the underside here um, on our lower cowl section, and then uh, might even get to start punching holes and uh, get it ready for epoxy and everything else. So we're gonna go ahead and get to it. Let's do it. All right guys, we're about to spray some 2K epoxy primer on our lower cowl section. So I'm not paid by Eastwood, not yet anyways, uh, but I really like their products. I use them all the time. You guys probably seen them all over the garage. Use their tools, use the body cart, use their paints. I mean, it's all really, really good stuff. And not to mention, they're only like 30 minutes away from me here in Ohio. So really good stuff. And uh, this is their, the 2K epoxy primer is really, really cool. So. You may look at this and think that this is just a rattle can and just to compare it you know vht makes an epoxy paint but this is not catalyzed paint so meaning that it's really not going to get that hard it's not going to be that resistant um, to rust to heat to anything else and so what's really nice about this stuff is that this basically gives you the exact same um, you know protection the exact same you know hardiness of catalyzed paint and it's a two-part paint so inside of it you've got your your obviously your black primer but then also there's a, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, a cartridge that punctures in the bottom of the can. So up in the top here, you can kind of see there's this little red cap. You pop this out, <clears throat> you put this on the bottom here, and what you do is that you push this in, just like that. And what that does is that it punctures the cylinder in there, and now you just shake it. Okay? So I'm gonna shake this here for a couple minutes, but basically what this is doing is the exact same thing, the exact same type of primer that you shoot out of a, um, an HVLP spray gun, it is a rattle can. And uh, so you don't need a big fancy compressor, you don't need anything like that. I do have a compressor, but I really like this stuff. I don't have to mix paint, I don't have to mess with, it, mix, uh, mess with anything. And uh, it works really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake this. You guys don't care to see that. 
Um, but uh, but again, this is the Eastwood 2K epoxy primer. Had great luck with this in the past, and it's a direct metal application. So, as you've already seen, we've got this thing stripped. It's in, you know, for the most part, bare metal, and uh, and it's also been degreased, so ready for primer. So, but uh, but yeah, just wanted to share this with you, and uh, yeah, highly recommend it. So check it out. All right, got two coats of epoxy primer down. Wanted to show you what it looks like. I am getting even more excited now seeing what this guy looks like here. So as you can see, I mean, it covers extremely well. It provides a really nice coating. It flashes really quick too. Um, but again, most importantly, it's really gonna protect that metal, prevent it from ever rusting again. And uh, yeah, it should just really provide a, a great surface uh, here for years to come. But um, again, that's the, the Eastwood 2K epoxy primer. Um, still probably have easily a half a can left. Um, what is nice about this, I mean, as you know, catalyzed paints, um, once you mix them, obviously they get hard over time. What's really nice about this stuff, I've painted engine blocks in the past with some of their colored um, paints, and as long as it's cold outside, they'll actually hold up for a couple weeks um, until they actually start hardening up. So um, next week, we've got to go drop off that front clip, get it blasted, get it back, immediately put it in this epoxy primer. I've got a couple cans of this. We're going to spray it and uh, make it look just like the rest of this cowl here, which, uh, which turned out fantastic. So getting excited um yeah so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna start uh drilling some holes while this is drying we're gonna drill those holes in that upper cowl section what is unfortunate i've got that punch flange tool again from eastwood um but it's got that this uh the, the upper cowl here has this lip that folds over the edge i won't be able to get that tool up on there so unfortunately probably half the uh, the holes i'm gonna have to drill by hand um, just takes longer it's still easy to do but uh the holes of the punch flange tool come out a lot cleaner um, in the end. So let's uh, let's keep going. All right, we are ready to burn some metal on this upper cowl here. So uh, as you guys saw, epoxy the entire thing underneath, um, two coats, actually three coats, because uh, after I did the weld through primer on my seam here, you could see some gray splatter on the inside of here. So I cleaned all that up so now it's nice and black all the way underneath there, so it all looks great. Um, ended up drilling all of our spot weld holes all the way around this, what I like to do, Typically every inch around here, I mean, you can't really go, uh, I mean, I guess you could do too many, um, but use your better judgment. I mean, every inch or so um, is still a little bit better than what they did from the factory on this. So um, so you're pretty safe there. But uh, the benefit to using, um, and I showed you guys, and you probably saw there, um, using this punch flange tool here, um, really, really nice tool, saves you a lot of time. So across this entire thing, I probably have, I don't know, about. 20, uh, well, probably about 30 spot weld holes across um, of where I'm gonna plug weld all the way around this upper cowl here. And this tool here, I mean, it prevents you or really you don't have to do any sort of deburring or cleaning after the fact. You can see here, I drilled all of these holes all the way around here. Then I have to go back through, deburr the top, deburr the bottom, and it just takes a lot of time. That punch flange tool, all you do is knock out all these holes all the way around there. And uh, they're really nice. You don't have to do any deburring, they're perfect. So. Um, definitely saves you a lot of time, but with this having this flange here across the bottom, I couldn't really do that. Um, so, a couple things. When I took off the upper cowl, and especially as I was separating some of the metal um, um, from our uh, the ear that we welded on, I noticed there's a lot of seam sealer around the entire thing. So this will come off one more time for a real quick shot of seam sealer around the uh, just around the uh, um, the edge here, just inside of where we're going to plug weld at. Obviously, you don't want to put it directly on the seam because you're going to be welding right through all that seam sealer and it's going to be poor welds. You're not going to have, or you're going to run into some issues there with that. So we'll run some seam sealer just on the inside of this um, all the way around. 
and uh, so that way it's all nice and watertight won't have any issues with water intruding in here um, and uh, yeah it should uh, should turn out real nice um, but then we're gonna come back we're gonna put this back on the car one last time and uh, yeah start burning some metal in um, I'll show you guys uh, real quick and dirty how I typically plug well there's nothing special to it it's super super simple as long as you've got some really good um, big clamps these are just Milwaukee clamps from Home Depot uh, if you've got some good clamps that you can follow your weld around with and pull it tight um, you're gonna wind up with pretty good welds out of this so really easy to do but uh yeah so let's go ahead and let's get this off here let's do the seam sealer real quick put it back on here and let's finish up this upper cowl Alrighty, you guys, finally time to weld this upper cowl on this car. Can't wait to get it done. Um, I did want to just real quick share with you guys my process for spot welding this on, or excuse me, for plug welding this on. Um, super simple, really can't screw it up. And uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, we already drilled all of our holes. We already deburred everything. It's ready to go. Seam sealer's on. It's smooshed out from the bottom of here. Um, did clear out the uh, the drains here on both sides that way we can get water out of here no problem um, but you can see here the seam sealer definitely is squeezing out right there as we um, as we go to weld this so that's exactly what I want and basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the clamps all the way around this panel here <clears throat> so you can see once I take this clamp off there's a big gap in there okay you do not want to weld if you have a big ass gap like this you'll end up burning through metal you'll have shitty looking welds and you will have really really bad fitting panels so what you do here is you get behind um, on both pieces here clamp it down and suck those two pieces as tight as you can get that's actually a little bit looser than what i want <clears throat> i want to actually be able to you know really press in these vice grips here and uh, there we go so you can see I'm gonna start right here and then basically I'm gonna move to the side over here I'm gonna start plugging these up here get a couple up here going and then again just kind of keep following it around keep following your clamps around clamp everything tight everything down as you go to weld all the way around um, this piece or really any piece that you're doing floor pans all of it is exactly the same so let's go ahead let's get started let's knock out these four uh, plug welds first and then let's keep moving our clamps and uh, let's get this thing finished up so let's get it done Alrighty, you guys all wrapped up out here on our upper cowl everything welded on really nicely all the way around honestly couldn't be happier with the way it turned out um, still have to go back through here with a grinding wheel or a flap wheel we'll smooth all of this out all the way around here um, and uh, basically get it ready for body work uh, on the ears turned out really really nice here um, where the fender mounts go cannot even tell that I took that um, or welded this piece on uh, earlier in this video so that turned out really nice um, all the way across here at the top all of our holes um, for our trim and our dash and everything all these holes lined up perfectly across the top Still got to do something here with this lead seam, but I'll get that a little bit closer once we uh, um, Get to uh, kind of the body paint and body stage and we'll figure out exactly how to do this and how to move this piece here forward um, But the rest of this I mean it all turned out really nice <clears throat> Like I said couldn't be happier um, and uh, Yeah, can't wait to uh, get us at least one step closer to finally getting that front clip onto the car uh, next week, I am going to start um, by cleaning up that front clip. We still got a little bit of sheet metal to take off there, and we'll go ahead and knock that out, get it over to the blasters, get it back here, get it epoxied, and get it welded on the car. Um, I am going to take a, a, a special trip tomorrow. Um, one of you guys had reached out um, and offered some parts, and uh, comes with a really cool story, and I want to kind of pass that along to you guys. Um, it's, it's, it's something really cool, and uh, just, again, I, I'm so appreciative of all the help, all the support. Um, the parts, um, all you guys have been fantastic so far. So 
I'm going to keep producing these videos. Hopefully you guys like them. If there's anything else you'd like to see, um, any other parts of the build, please feel free to let me know. Um, also another reminder, definitely add me on Instagram. It's just Rust Bucket Restos. I do put a lot more of the detailed pictures here, a lot of the steps along the way that are not captured in the video. So typically I go through about six to seven hours of video footage, shrink it down to about 20 to 30 minutes. So um, there's a lot of things that are missed. I try to dump all that on Instagram for you guys. So check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's about it. So take care guys and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.